Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so this week we are headed into just a gorgeous fall season. So this week's painting is called The Road to Fall. And it's a really quaint country scene of a barn and some gorgeous fall colors. I'm gonna take you through it every step of the way as per usual. And I have my four standard brushes from my special kit that I like to use for most classes. So that's my largest square brush, a medium-sized pointy brush. And then two small detail brushes, gonna get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. To see a complete materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. All right, so the colors that we're starting with for the background step today, for the first layer, I have black and white, which kind of blend together, but that's okay, things are gonna get messy anyway. I have a nice burnt sienna type warm brown. I have a little bit of my phthalo green, some cadmium yellow, and some ultramarine blue. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. So we're gonna start today's painting with a little bit of sketching, but we're going to do it with our paint still. No pencils are required. I'm gonna use my second to smallest detail brush for this step, and I'm going to mix up a gray. That's just black and white together. And I'm going fairly dark so that these lines are easy to see. Um, but feel free to go lighter, especially if you're feeling a little nervous about blocking everything out. That way it's easier to cover. But I want you guys to be able to see it nice and clearly. So I'm going to use a little bit of a darker sort of medium gray. And the first line that I'm going to do is going to be the very top of the horizon line for my road. I'm going to start by doing a little horizontal line like so, pretty small, and then I'm going to do the road from there with two curved lines. And this first one I'm going to curve out a little bit and then kind of straighten out about like so. And then this one is going to have a strong curve. I think I'm going to go in a little bit, don't want to make it too wide. And I'm going to curve my road all the way to the other side to this corner. Okay, we can adjust things as we begin to fill in as well. That looks pretty good though. And then from there, we're going to do two little hills on either side, sort of gently sloping for our little farmland. Very nice. Okay. And then I'm going to block out the area here where there's going to be sort of like the dirt on the side of the road. Get a little bit further out. And along the other side as well. And you're gonna get pretty straight there by the end, just like so. So now we have sort of our different areas. We're gonna have our little barn here. We're gonna have some cute oak trees poking over the little ridge there. We're gonna have some mountains as well. And I'm gonna start just another little mountain range just like so. And coming up from there as well. So like we're driving up into the mountains. How cute. Okay, now we have everything sort of blocked out for our first layer. So let's grab our medium sized brush to start filling in from the top to the bottom. So I'm gonna grab my gorgeous ultramarine blue with that medium sized brush and a little bit of water always and I'm going to come in there with some pretty vibrant blue and then I'll grab a little bit of white and sort of help that blend. We're going for a sort of fantasy, storybook, quaint 
feeling. So I'm not going for anything super realistic here with my sky, but just kind of playing with my light blue color and my white. And I'm going from the top down here. That way I can have a nice seamless transition with each layer. So you're gonna come down all the way to your gray sketch line with this sky section of your painting. Okay, it's like we've created a nice little paint by numbers or coloring book for ourselves with our lines. We want to cover those sketch lines with the paint that we don't want to see them poking out. We want to see them a little bit as a guide though. But then we're going to come in with the next color up into that blue and it will be a nice seamless transition with no more sketch lines visible. It's much harder to cover pen pencil marks pencil sketching, a little bit more saturation there in the blue, just having fun with those beautiful colors. Okay, and you're welcome to use your second to smallest brush for this step, but I'm going to use the same brush and I've rinsed it. If you ever feel like you need more control, just go ahead and use a smaller brush. Okay, I'm going to now make a little bit of a navy blue. So I'm gonna create what's called a tone of that blue, which is blue with gray. So that's blue, black, and white together. And I'm going to come up here into the sky. Now you can see what I mean about that seamless transition. I'm going to paint in these distant mountains that our road is leading us towards up into the blue sky and then bringing it to that sketch line and covering it slightly, just like so. If you'd like to learn more about tones, tints, tones, shades, and color theory, I have a course on it on Skillshare called Color Theory 101. And I have a Skillshare link for my students to get a month free. So you can actually check that out for free and check out some other cool stuff on Skillshare while you're at it. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white on that same brush. I'm going to create a little bit of interest in those mountains. Okay, just kind of going along the shape of the mountains and creating you know, a little bit of ridges, probably not snow yet. We're still in October. First weekend of October, very nice. Okay, pretty cute. We're gonna rinse my brush and work my way down into the next area. So I'm gonna grab some green. We're gonna have a nice green grassy field. I think I'm gonna bring a pinch of brown in, not too much though, and some white for some beautiful pasture grass. We're going to use this color in these grassy sections and you're gonna bring that color all the way up to the blue and have a nice transition there. And you're going to be mindful not to pull the color, the blue into your green too much. So I'm just going right up to it, but try not to pull it through. And then we're going to keep all of our brush strokes going the direction that this shape is going. So in this case, this grass is growing up like that. So we're gonna bring all of our brush strokes up that little hill. Okay, very nice. Every brush stroke matters. That's what I say in many classes. And it's true. A little bit of brown, not too much. I want it to be, just capture that feeling, that perfect first week where the leaves start to turn, but you still have that green of summer hanging on. Okay, a little bit 
of green over here as well. A little bit of water always. And my paint, I'm going to come up into the blue, nice gentle slope there. This imaginary person has a great property. Nice green fields and lovely hills and even an oak tree forest. Beautiful fence. It has got the whole thing. Very nice. Okay, pulling that up to that sketch line. And over here, that's going to be the next sketch line down. So we're going to pull this color now down to that line. Keeping all of your brush strokes consistent. Keeping a little bit of water on the brush. Letting the paint soak into the canvas texture. Okay. Coming back there and just making all my brush strokes nice and consistent. But that's looking pretty good to me. Okay, moving right along. Same brush, just sticking with that brush. I feel really comfortable with this brush. I'm a fan. A little bit of brownish beige. I think I'm gonna sneak in just a little bit of black too. So a tone of that burnt sienna. And that's just gonna be the dirt on the side of the road little area where we have our beautiful trees planted. Lovely, getting it all nice and consistent and filled in. I think in this case, I might not cover the sketch line completely because I think I want the road to come out a little bit more. I know the road's gonna be a nice dark color And just making sure all my brush strokes are consistent there as well. You can adjust the angle if you need to. Doesn't have to be perfect because this is a natural shape here on the side of the road where the dirt meets the grass. Gonna mix up a little bit more of that color. Pinch of black, a little bit of black goes a long way. A little bit of white as well. Toning that down. Okay. And I'm just going to bring that there to the other side of the road. And I once again in being a little bit cautious here, not to make my road too fat up there because I want to get that illusion of distance. So I'm going to bring the brown over kind of as far as it needs to be so that I have a nice narrow road there as if it's going up and over that hill. It's important that this go all the way. This is much wider than you think that it would be to get that perspective correct. And it's important that this part kind of becomes horizontal again. Okay, loving this brush. It's just so smooth. It is a watercolor brush as well. This kit works for both mediums. Bring that right to my green. There we go. Great. Okay, our final little area of our adorable little scene. I'm going to grab some blue. I'm going to make a navy similar to the color that I have my back mountains, but we're going to go a little bit more on the dark side, a little bit more on the asphalty side here. And bring some 
white in there as well. So navy blue, but more black, a little bit darker. Okay, about like so. And that's gonna be our final area to fill in with our base color for this first layer. Straight line up top here, important. Okay. Being very delicate. Feel free to use a smaller brush in that area. It's pretty small. I'm just using very light pressure. And just pulling that right alongside the brown. Pulling that all the way down, looking good. Road to fall. Okay, getting that nice seamless transition. Ooh. No canvas showing after this step. Everything should be nice and filled in. little area over here and we're actually gonna make this area let's go ahead and just fill that in a little bit lighter on the right hand side here or left hand side rather this side here it's never good with my lips and eyes. <laughs> Still struggle. <laughs> a little bit more white. I want to have a little bit of a highlight here on this part of the road. And I want to sweep that over a little bit towards the other side. That looks pretty good. Let's go a little bit lighter. And that's going to add to the illusion of depth there as well. There's our perspective, a little bit of color there. There we go. Nice, strong highlight. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like it. We can add one more little detail to this layer I think here with our oak trees. So let's grab a little bit of a dark green and some yellow. Make a gorgeous, rich emerald green. And right on top of this little hillside, Going to do a little oak forest that starts to come down like so and end right about there. Okay, just placing the color right on the wet paint, that's fine. It's like a thick forest that you can't even see the trunks of the trees. Grab a little bit of a lighter highlight color, just that same color with a little bit of white. I'm going to kind of throw that in there as well and then come back with the dark again. It's going to be a sort of play the two colors. Very cute. Can't decide. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make that a little bit smoother there on the bottom. 
a little bit of a darker color. To kind of mix things up as well. I'm just gonna play there with your little forest. That looks pretty cute. All right, let's go ahead now and let this layer dry. And then we're gonna come back with a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry first layer and some fresh colors on my piece of palette paper. So once again, I have a fair amount of white, some black, a little bit of my warm burnt sienna brown, some phthalo green and some cadmium yellow. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. All right, let's go ahead and jump right back on in. I'm going to grab my second to smallest small brush and I am pretty much done with the sky and these blue mountains. So I'm gonna be working mostly on this bottom two thirds now um, for this part of the class. And the first thing that we're gonna do is come right into our little oak tree area that we were in before, which is a little bit of a shadow color. I'm just gonna pull a few little tiny lines out from that little forest area. Just ever so slight little horizontal dark shadows, really just the slightest little touch there. And then I'm gonna come up and outline my little green mountains, with a little bit of dark green as well. I don't wanna to go too dark though, so I'm actually gonna tone that down a little bit. And I want to get that nice clean line there of separation. Very slight little steps today in this landscape. Okay, I'm going to come around right where the green meets the brown a little bit of a shadow as well. I'm sort of placing it down there and then fading it a little bit, coming back with a damp brush right where the dirt meets the grass. Just adding a little bit of shadow And sort of interest in our field. That looks pretty good. Coming back over there and just toning it down a little bit. You can grab a little bit of a light green if you need help with the toning down. All right, just like so. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then same idea over here. This is a really similar color to that area. You don't want to go too dark with this. It's a very subtle step. Just keeping things nice and clean. So, okay, and over here in the right hand hill, I'm going to take a little bit of a highlight color and add a little bit of highlight, a little bit of a color variation there, the lighter color, and kind of work my way down a little bit. for a little bit of variation and just giving that hill a little bit of roundness, sort of. Okay, that looks better. Just make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit of varied grass texture. Maybe some areas are a little bit darker than others. 
Okay, looking good. Subtle step. I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of a light, light green. A little bit more yellow there. For some highlights here in my little oak forest as well. Just gonna scribble your way around. Make those little curved brush strokes. About like so. And then again, you can kind of tone it down again if you need to with some dark green again. Get that additional layer there. Just adds a little bit more interest. Like so. Okay, interesting, I like it. Okay, let's go ahead now and work a little bit on our house. So you can use your teeny tiny brush if you want, but I'm gonna use this same medium-sized, small detail brush. And I'm going to just use white. This is a fairly simple barn shape. Not doing anything too fancy. And I wanna start by having the pitch here of the roof actually sort of come up a little bit into that little oak forest. You don't wanna to pull too much green there through it. We're gonna block out our little barn shape by doing a little triangle first, just like so. And then a little rectangle there at the bottom. Okay, that's the sort of side there that we're looking at. And then just create the little bottom part, super simple. Okay, and then from the top part here, we're going to go down ever so slightly to create the pitch of the roof there. And then we're going to mirror that down here. And then we're going to bring this one up a little bit to meet it there on the other side. Okay, so slightly different angles there. That's gonna create that front on angle here and then we see the little side of the barn or little house area there as well. Okay, let's grab a little bit of a dark gray for the roof of the barn. Very cute, a little bit darker there. Okay, we're just gonna fill in these base colors first. No detail yet. Feel free to use your tiniest brush. I'm just going to use that brush for the very smallest details. Okay, and then just filling in the whole roof and covering those sketch lines. All solid filled in. Okay, let me rinse my brush. And now come in with white in the front section. Trying to make it as neat as I can. And just get it all filled in. Nice and solid, no see-through green. Okay, you might kind of lose this sketch line here for a second, but we're just gonna remember where it is. You might need to give your green a second to dry or just really try to use a lot of paint just to get that all nice and covered. And then just filling in the front part of my little barn as well. I'm gonna go ahead and grab 
that very teeny tiny brush for the small details just to get those all nice and clean. Little tiny details like this make a big difference. There. Okay. And then let's grab a little bit of gray and find that line again, making sure I don't have drips. And just come up right down like so. That'll help us sort of remember the shape that that is going to be. And then we're going to let that dry for just a second. Going to retire that small brush. And let's see, I want to use I think my medium sized pointed brush over here in the field for a little bit of highlight color as well, similar to what we did over here. To bring that highlight there up into that little hill and then pulling it over here towards my house. I'm going to grab a little bit of more of a medium green, similar to the color that we used to fill in. I'm going to have a little hill I'll just block right over the little house area, right like so. And then take a little bit of a darker green right along the top of the hill. Just to add a little bit of color variation, just like so. As if that there's a little hill first and then the barn is just on the other side of the hill. And just bringing that line down a little bit and kind of erasing it into the lighter green. And then just adding a little bit of fun color variation up there. Perfect. Okay, that's looking really cute. Let's leave that area now alone for a minute and let it dry before we add our final touches there onto our barn and around that area. I'm gonna grab my second to smallest detail brush now and work a little bit here in my little dirt area. So first things first, going to kind of create a little bit of color variation in there, similar to kind of what I just did in my grassy areas. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of a darker brown, so that's brown and black together, just tone down a little bit. And I'm going to bring that slightly darker brown onto either side of that brown area. And it's going to end up looking like there's a, like a little bit of a mound in the middle. creating variation and depth in each one of these little sections that we've created for ourselves. Okay, rinsing my brush and then coming in with a damp brush, just toning that down a little bit. Lightening it, using my water and my brush as a blending tool. Nice. Okay. And I'm going to start adding a little bit of sort of variation into this dirt as well with a darker color going back and forth. And kind of disappearing there off into the distance, okay? And then we're going to do that same thing on the other side. Same idea. Darker on either side. It's our final chance there to sort of finesse that area. Okay, bring up the top part as well. And a little bit of rough variation 
in the dirt as well. Each area makes sense. We understand how they meet each other. A little bit of shadow. Each section. Okay. I think that barn looks so cute, tucked away there. A little bit darker. Nice smooth line, a little bit of water, bringing that all the way to the cement, to the asphalt rather. And then just pulling that up a little bit with my damp brush, a little bit of blending. Okay, nice. And we're going to have some back and forth texture here in our dirt. It's going to stay horizontal all the way back. Okay, just like so. Nice. And then let's grab a highlight color as well. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow to make it more of like a beige, kind of a sandy color. And put that right through the center part just for a little bit of variation. You see how similar my colors are. If they were less, it would be a little bit stripy looking. Okay, very, very close colors. And just kind of messing up that area. And creating more of that sort of like mulched dirt feel. Okay, now let's grab our black. You can take a little bit of white into it so that it's more of a dark, dark gray. I'm going to shadow the road. Make that nice and clean where the road meets the dirt. And then the top part of my road, just making sure that it's nice and clean like so. Let's go ahead and add the middle white marks here in the road. Very tiny to start. Little tiny ones right in the center. And they're gonna get bigger and bigger come around the road and they're going to look like they're farther apart, just like so. Cute. Like it. And that one just trails off a little bit too much. I want to make it look nice and solid, like so. Okay. Very cute. All right, let's do our fence now. And we're going to mix up a dark brown with brown and black together. You want to make sure that your fence is about this right height. So we're going to start here in the front area. I'm going to go maybe about a half inch tall with these fence posts to start. And they're just going to be horizontal. It's okay if they're a little bit wonky because it's kind of like a rustic fence. And they're going to be evenly spaced and straight up and down. And then you're gonna work your way back and just like kind of the reverse of these highway marks there in the center, they're gonna get smaller and closer together the further you go back. But it's important to stay straight up and down still. Okay, so even though the road curves, we're not going along the curve of the road, we're staying straight up and down. And then they're gonna get very small until they go all the way up and over the hill. Like so. And with that same color, we're going to have 
a top line that connects them all. Do that in one swoop. Usually ends up a little bit more graceful that way. And then coming back, thickening it up a little bit. And then a second line right underneath. All the way back and sort of disappearing over the horizon. And let's grab a little bit of a darker color. And around each post, we're going to have a quick little shadow where the post comes into the dirt. Just like so. I think I'm going to make it a little bit taller here to start and a little bit thicker as well. Okay, but I like how it's trailing off. I think it's a little bit smaller as it goes. Okay, very nice. Rinsing my brush, I'm gonna grab a little bit of a light color now. Very light beige. And just come in here real quick with some highlights on each little post. We'll create a little bit of interest there and you can do some highlights on the in-between posts as well. Just like so, working your way back. You don't want to completely cover the brown though, just playing with that wet on wet blending. Cute. Okay, looks good. All right, now we're gonna do our trees with that same brown. Only a little bit lighter, so a little bit more on the brown side and I think I'll add a little bit of white to it as well. Let's see, a little darker than that. Yeah, I want a fair amount here to do my trees with. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to start with my kind of further back tree. And I'm just going to put that right there in the middle of my little dirt area and start to trail my brush upwards. And then fatten up the base a little bit. And the base here is going to do a little bit of sort of like some triangular shape for the roots. About like so. And then I'm actually going to bring these branches all the way up and off the sides of the canvas here. And I want this back one to be pretty thin. Going real skinny with my brush strokes and just creating that tree shape. We do trees in a lot of classes because they're all over. <laughs> and just having some branches come off from each section, just like so. We don't need to do too many because we're going to have a lot of foliage all around. Yeah, let's do one coming off like so. Okay, that's looking pretty cute. And then we're going to do another tree. Sort of right next door. Okay, they're going to be planted like they're buddies. And then that one's going to come up in that same area. You might have some overlap and that's okay. And same idea, you want to take that all the way up and off the canvas there. I'm going to bring one branch here right in the center. Try to pull that out here towards the middle and create sort of like a frame, right? Okay, looking good. Let's 
getting that all filled in. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of a dark, dark, dark brown, almost black. I'm gonna go right here at the base of my tree and just pull a little bit of shadow up and through. We're pulling that shadow all through the shape and just kind of cleaning up the base area. Very nice. And pulling the shadow through most of the branches, but that doesn't have to go through all of them. A little bit of variation in the color. And then the same idea with a lighter color. Okay, always adding highlights and shadows with each area. I'm gonna take a little bit just of light beigey brown and create a little bit of interest, a little bit of variation there in the color, just like every other area. A few swipes there down the trunk of the tree. Very, very, very light pressure. Just ever so slight. Okay, just here and there. We're gonna kind of hide most of our tree here in just a minute. So don't spend too long making the perfect branches. And then we're gonna have two trees on the other side too. I'm gonna have my first one that would kind of be coming off from the side here. So we're actually just gonna have a branch coming off from the side of the canvas. Just like so, like we're driving through a really pretty tunnel of trees. And then I'm gonna have another tree kind of centered here in my composition. You don't wanna block your cute little barn. Okay, so right kind of in the center here. Perhaps a little bit nerve wracking to pull these big brush strokes right through our beautiful landscape but it's worth it. That's the best part of it. It's the trees with the full colors. Okay, and just balancing that off of either side. Very cute. And just building up the tree as you like. Nice. Little branches all coming off of the main ones. Okay, and then, but you know the drill. Gonna add some shadows and some highlights. So starting again with that black, dark black brown. And pull that through some areas create a little bit of depth. Technically, we should go and just shadow all of one side and then highlight all of the other based on which one is facing up. But I kind of just throw the colors on there and allow a little bit of artistic license. Okay, rinsing my brush again and grabbing that light grayish tan color and throwing some highlights through that tree in just the same fashion. A little bit of short highlights there in the stump looks good. The trunk. Okay, and a little bit over there. Very cute. Okay, let's leave that area alone for just a second. And let's go back over to our little barn. 
because he looks dry and ready to finish off. A little bit of dark gray here. And I'm going to use that to outline the barn. Very light handed. Like so. Find that line again. Nice and clean, feel free to use your small brush. Going to switch to that in just a second. Going to take some brush strokes that goes down the length of the roof. A little bit of roof texture. Trying to get a little bit of black over here for a darker gray. Nice. Okay. A little bit of kind of a medium gray now, not too dark. Clean brush. I'm going to do a sort of dividing line. This is like the bottom level of the barn versus maybe like a top lofted area. And I'm going to do some up and down brush strokes to just create sort of like a weathered feeling. You can grab a little bit of white if you need to help you tone anything down. Just going to kind of make it look a little bit messy and interesting. Same idea there on the front. Very nice. I'm gonna grab a little bit of dark green with that same brush. And just a tiny bit of shadow here. The front part of the barn. Very nice. Okay, I'm gonna grab my smallest brush now for the final details. Take a nice dark gray. I'm going to do a top window, just little rectangles, nothing too fancy. I'm going to grab a little bit of white, kind of tone it down a little bit. And you can use some white too to help you make it look more rectangular. Nice. Okay. And the one in the center down here on the bottom floor. And let's do a row of three. Three windows, filling them in with that dark gray. And if you need, then grabbing a little bit of white afterwards, going around to finesse it. Square or rectangular, really, it doesn't matter. And then the barn front door is gonna be a bit bigger. And once again, you really wanna make sure your lines are straight up and down. We're going to follow this similar angle. Here is like the bottom, but a little bit flatter. Just like so. And if you want, you can make it look like maybe that's a barn door that has two halves. A little highlight there right in the middle. And those highlights are sort of interesting if you want to add a little bit of like interest there in the barn windows. You can as well. I don't like it too light. A little bit of gray in there, like something's going on in there. I think looks good. Let's see, a little bit too much on this middle one. Really tiny steps. Okay, that looks pretty cute. 
We want to grab a little bit more white in this area right there. Just tone that down a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to grab a little bit of white too and put some highlights in the roof. Going that same line straight down. Okay, very cute. Loving it. All right, I'm going to grab a little bit of some light, very, very light beige. While I still have that same small brush, I'm going to go back over my little fence posts one more time. Just a little bit of a white highlight, almost white, still beige. Just because I had that in hand. And then for this final, almost over, home stretch part, we're going to grab some white with our medium sized brush. This is sort of a unconventional step. We're going to come up here in our trees. And the reason that we're going to do this first white layer so that we get a really nice and vibrant orange, we're going to start adding our foliage onto our trees where we're going to put that orange here after we let this dry. And this is kind of a fun step because some trees bloom with white blossoms so maybe this is like the springtime but we're going to then come back and make it gorgeous and orange here in just a minute and we're just kind of laying our brush either way here and filling in that corner mostly and then we're going to work our way across the top part here you want to pull the foliage down onto the branches pretty far down not just the top okay so you may have a few inches worth of foliage coming down here nice and full lots of leaves on our tree all the way over and a little bit of peekaboo of your branches still Fill out that corner and the little peekaboo of our barn. So cute. Okay, and then a little bit of white here down below. We're gonna have a few brush strokes of the leaves that have fallen. And those are also going to get smaller as you go back. And there's no trees over there, so just a few kind of around our little area. All right, just like so. And then we're gonna let that layer dry and come back and make it gorgeous fall colors once our white is fully dry. So I'll see everyone in a few minutes for the final step. Okay, welcome back to the final step. We have a dry white layer. We have our final very satisfying colors to add. I'm going to take my rinsed medium sized brush and with these colors, I want to pretty much go right on top of the white. You don't really want to pull it over. And you'll see why we did the white. Once you get going, you want to go right on top of there because if you go over the edge, you'll see that it's very transparent. And we're going to start with this light yellow. So yellow and white together. And I'm going to bring that all throughout. I'm going to cover maybe a little bit more than half of the white foliage brush marks with this light yellow. Okay, I'm gonna leave some though. I'm gonna come in with orange in just a minute there. So right on top of the beautiful white that we made for ourselves. Going to come down here and add a couple brush strokes of that yellow down here as well. Right all throughout. Just getting that first color on there. A little bit in each area, just like so. Looks good. And do a couple of brush strokes of yellow down here as well. All right. Rinse my brush just a little bit. 
Now I'm gonna come in with a yellow orange. That's gonna be orange and yellow together. I'm gonna come into some of those areas and I'm also going to overlap on top of that yellow. I'm gonna start getting those nice color variations. And in some areas you're gonna have actual orange just by itself. And so we have yellow, yellow, orange, and orange. Okay. Take some of this in between. We want to make sure that we've covered all of our white. And we're kind of playing with these three colors. And sort of messing things up, but allowing there to be a little bit of color variation and a little bit of solid color left. Very nice with the different layers, I think, of orange and yellow. So pretty, really. Like I said, it's just a satisfying step, I think. Adding a little bit of orange here and there. Very pretty. Right on top of that white, covering it completely. Have a little bit of texture in each brush stroke. The texture of the paint matters also more than just not more than but as well as color and the direction of your brush strokes. The sort of nooks and crannies that the light creates with the textured brush strokes actually add to the overall effect as well. Alright, looking really nice. And a bit more yellow. Making sure all my white is covered. Very pretty. bit of that vibrant orange here and there as well. And some orange down the bottom. So cute. All right. final touches that you might want to put on your painting. Go ahead and do so. And that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So let me know what you thought of today's fall painting in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'm really excited about the upcoming Halloween and Christmas paintings that I have coming, but let me know what you want to paint in the comments section below as well. Again, love to hear your suggestions. If you painted along today, I have a Facebook group called The Art Club that's specifically designed for my students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me or just from your own home studio, I would love to see your work. There's a link in the description box below to join that as well. All right, and that is all I have for us. So until next time, stay creative.